Michelle Obama to our Space Camp Hall of Fame. opportunity to come back here. The last time I was here was 1984, and boy have things changed for the better. I am so proud to be part of Space Camp. I guess uh, one of the people I should thank tonight as well as my dad, that he came all the way from Wisconsin, and neither of us know how we're getting home tomorrow. So uh, I, I really have to say thank you very much, Dad, for being here, my dad, Mike. Um, I was born in the 1960s, and at that time, it probably wasn't incredibly obvious that a father who has his little daughter saying, I'd like to be an astronaut, I'd like to work for NASA, uh, that he would encourage that. That dad was with me every step of the way. And uh, I've heard it said that really the two things you can give a child are to make them feel loved and to encourage their curiosity. And if you can do those two things, everything else pretty much works out somehow in the end. And I certainly had that growing up. And then the other part was the curiosity that Space Camp instilled into me. And I, I know all of you that work for Space Camp, I also work for the public. For all of you astronauts, every time somebody says, what does it feel like to launch on a shuttle? or every time somebody from the public comes up and goes, tell me about the Big Bang. You, you see these things over and over again, but you really have to realize what an impact you have on young people. You really changed my world. Uh, imagine giving a young person the power to know that they can ask any question, any possible question, and you're either going to find the answer out, or you're going to learn where the limit of current knowledge is. Curiosity has been a wonderful companion in life that you helped instill in me at Space Camp. And I have to say, when you're curious, the, the times in my life when I've been most afraid, curiosity has really gotten me through. And I, I found it very hard to dislike or, or hate people if you can be genuinely curious about why they have the opinions that they do. It's a very underrated virtue. Um, the, the, the things that Space Camp has allowed me to do it was amazing. In the, last, the, the uh, launch of the last space shuttle, I was surrounded by my colleagues at NASA, Washington, D.C., and I was one of the spokespeople for that event. And there were all kinds of reporters watching us at the Goddard Space Flight Center, and they saw me take out a handkerchief, because I knew I was going to be tearing up. And uh, immediately, all of the cameras were in my face, because you know, here was a person from NASA tearing up in the space shuttle launch. And the space shuttle has been an incredible inspiration for me. I was 11 when the space shuttle went off. And it drew me to become involved in, in space science, to come to space camp. But then after the launch was over and I calmed myself down and dried my eyes, the reporters started asking questions about, well, aren't you, aren't you sad that NASA is going downhill, you know, all of this? And then I, I have to say I was really floored by that question. Because let, let me make it very clear, there has never been a better time to be a scientist at NASA than right now. Right now, as Hurricane Irene blows my travel plans for tomorrow, we have an armada of satellites looking at that thing. The trim satellite is taking a CAT scan through it to try to figure out where it's loading energy and how it's working. We have both unmanned and piloted aircraft that are monitoring that. All the way from the Earth science that we do to the solar system exploration, our place in the galaxy, the, uh, the person that has an office two doors down from mine is Dr. John Mather, who happens to have a Nobel Prize. And the work that he does, it, it's great to go by his office. He thinks he may have evidence of universes beside our own. Cool. So think about that. NASA, all the way from Earth science to the frontiers of modern physics, we are a world treasure. There is no institution on the planet that gives you that range of people. And we are a wonderfully diverse and rich crowd of people as was well, led very well by Major General Charles Bolden. Good to see you here, sir. So I have to say, curiosity is what has brought me here. Think about another curiosity. In November, we'll be launching the biggest Mars rover ever. Last week, I guess two weeks ago now, we announced the discovery of flowing salt water 
on the surface of Mars. And that, in connection with measuring little puffs of methane, natural gas in the soil that comes up in the summer, is leading us to wonder if there may be life on Mars today. And NASA's going to be the one to find that. Think on that. Kindergartners today, I often tell them this, by the time they get to graduate school, I want them to be studying exobiology, real alien life. We could be the last generation of people not to know there's life out there. So I have to say, all the way from the curiosity that was instilled at Space Camp to the Curiosity rover that's launching later this year, thank you so much for the work that you do. And uh, if anything, if I could just add one more request, just always stay curious. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thal.